The University of Michigan may have been listed as the third best team in the Big Ten in the preseason, and that ranking also put them among the top five teams in the nation. Coach Bill Frieder had assembled the best team Ann Arbor had seen in more than a decade. Bill Frieder was one of the most eccentric guys who's ever walked on the sideline of any court. He was brilliant. He was a math whiz, the guy so good at counting cards. that Las Vegas kicked him out of casinos, he cannot go back there, he's recognized. He's that smart. Freed's always had the beshoveled look, the towel over his shoulder, and he was really a gym rat who became a basketball coach. I think he had a good eye in terms of developing chemistry. Frieder's team included a bumper crop of homegrown hoop legends and imported McDonald's All-Americas, including Glenn Rice, who was just plain lethal with the basketball. Inside, they take it to Rice. Glenn Rice was the, was the purest catch-shoot player that I've ever had the privilege to be around. Uh, his form and technique was the same whether he was shooting it from 15 feet or 25 feet. When he got in a groove, you were shocked when he missed one. And when Rice got cooking, there was no one better to feed him the ball than Ramil Robinson, one of the nation's best point guards. That's a sweet move by Robinson. Add in Sean Higgins. Higgins fades away. What talent. Terry Mills and Loy Vaught. And what the Maize and Blue had was not only a team capable of winning a Big Ten title, but a national championship as well. So you got a pretty good core, but you really weren't sure were they going to be great? I don't think anybody thought they were going to be great going into the season. And, uh, you know, okay, they might contend for a Big Ten title. They've got, they've got the horses to do it, but will they do it? I mean, that was a big question mark. After reeling off 11 straight to start the season, the Big Blue was looking to coast into the conference schedule undefeated. But things didn't quite play out that way. What happened when we went out to Utah to play in a Christmas tournament was we were probably from every perspective a little too full of ourselves. I can remember sitting up and watching Anchorage, Alaska warm up and thinking this should be easy. The loss to Alaska Anchorage was the wake up call Michigan needed to get their minds focused heading into Big Ten play. And so it was a, it was a wake up call for me personally. It was also a wake up call for my teammates also that when one of us go down, we got to pick up the slack. Even though the Michigan Wolverines were on the short end of both matchups against the Indiana Hoosiers, the Maize and Blue did have a measure of success against the Iowa Hawkeyes, including a classic 108-107 double overtime thriller. If you watch those games, you could tell, man, there's something more to these two teams playing against each other. They seem like they got a lot more at stake. Some of those battles that we had with Iowa, very tough game. And you literally can go to the locker room and say, doesn't matter this time if we won or lost because I can't move anymore. The final game on the 1989 Big Ten schedule was a nationally televised senior day matchup in Ann Arbor between Illinois and Michigan. Even though this game would not decide a Big Ten championship, the Fighting Illini were able to send a message that was heard loud and clear. The game that probably stands out in my mind the most out of all the games that season was a loss, and that was to Illinois at the end of the season here at Chrysler Arena. A night that I think everybody looked forward to. Uh, parent night, everyone has their parents out. Illinois, to be quite honest, uh, probably had the best team in the United States of America. And it was amazing to watch Illinois just roll over them in Ann Arbor uh, when the Illini, uh, you know, were nowhere near the size. But Illinois could go in and rebound with them. When you put Battle and, and Hamilton and Anderson on the boards, they didn't have to be taller to get the rebound. Illinois just dismembers Michigan in a way I've never seen Michigan get beaten. Humiliating. You know, that's one of those things where you don't lose a fight in front of your mother. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we lost a fight in our own house in front of our parents, and that was quite embarrassing. And as we were walking off the court, I just remember standing behind Bill Frieder, and we were getting booed and sworn at as we walked through the tunnel. The crowd was really, it was, it was one of those things where if you would have said, what were we gonna do in the uh, postseason, you would have said, I don't think it's gonna be a long trip. The 1989 Michigan Wolverines reunited, 20 years after accomplishing the impossible, reliving the moments of that championship season that are now frozen in time. The season was 1989, and it truly was 
the greatest in Big Ten history.